Well, the push against illegal immigration is often attacked as a racist effort by white Americans to keep out non-white immigrants. But one black civil rights advocate says, in fact, the biggest victims of low-wage illegal labor are black men in this country who see their own job opportunities dry up and their own wages undercut. Peter Kersenow is a member of the United States Commission on Civil Rights. He was also a candidate for President Trump's Secretary of Labor, and he joins us now. Peter, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having so, me. So this is, this is a position you don't hear very much, but makes a kind of intuitive uh, sense. Unpack it, if you would. What, what do you mean when you say that black men in America are the biggest victims of this? Sure. Well, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, we've conducted at least three hearings over the last six years of the Civil Rights Commission on this discrete issue. And we had a number of experts testify. We reduced a number, uh, a lot of information with respect to the economic impact of illegal immigration on low-skilled workers generally. And all of the witnesses, all of the experts that we had who spanned the ideological spectrum, they may, may have disagreed in terms of the degree of the impact, but all of them concurred that illegal immigration has a devastating impact on wage levels and employment levels, and it's Econ 101, Tucker. When yes. you have an oversupply of labor, the price of labor is going to be depressed. And also, we have an oversupply of low-skilled labor, and what happens is, Black males are disproportionately concentrated in the low-skill labor market, disproportionately right. have high, only high school diplomas, and over the last about 20 years or so, the bulk of our immigration, or both legal and illegal, has been on the low-skilled side. So we have an oversupply of low-skilled labor. It has a particularly magnified effect among black males who are in that cohort. But it's not just black males, it's all low-skilled Americans. It's right. also having a trickle-up effect on uh, other Americans also. And it has an effect on black females also, and it has profound sociological implications as well. I don't even know what the counter-argument to what you s just said is. It, it seems obvious. Um, it's clearly true. Has anyone told the Congressional Black Caucus? Yeah, I have. Um, on at least three occasions and probably more, what we did is immediately after reducing some of this, this evidence, and it's profound because we're talking about a, I think it's a 40 point, um, a 40 percent of the 18 point decline in labor force participation rates among black males is attributable to the oversupply of illegal immigration labor competing with them. So we're talking about at the very low end, hundreds of thousands of blacks losing jobs. Probably, if you do the math, up to 1.2 million blacks losing jobs. This has significant, obviously, impacts on the black community. Got in touch with the Congressional Black Caucus, sent them detailed information on this, asked them to do something about it, to respond to us, to um, engage in this effort. My assistant repeatedly would follow up on this. What we heard were crickets. Did the same thing with President Barack Obama, crickets again. And this isn't some minor matter. When we're talking no. about a labor force participation rate of 61.8%, an appalling labor force participation rate among black males, and again, family formation rates are affected by this, right. incarceration right. rates are affected by this. This may be one of the top issues facing the black community, but I've heard silence, but worse than silence, frankly. We've seen Congressional Black Caucus and many others embrace the open borders philosophy that's done such damage to black employment prospects. This seems like a scandal to me. Can you explain it? Um, I think it really has to do with political imperatives. I really can't explain it going, down, going beyond that. I can't get into their heads. But this is something that is plain. It's unequivocal. It's not something that's complicated. And yet they've embraced a, an element that actually does egregious harm to the prospects of the black community. Again, I'm focused right now on the black community, but it does right. incredible harm with respect to all employment at the sure. low-skilled level. And then we've seen what's happened with H-1B and H-2B visas. We can handle that smartly, but it's not being handled smartly, and it's affecting black workers. But I think that the political imperative of identity politics has trumped, no pun intended, the desire or the, the imperative to protect your constituents. It's just so striking to hear someone discuss immigration in economic terms using numbers and social science rather than in identity politics terms. And I just wonder why more on the left don't do that. They used to. I think um, they, again, I'm not an expert at these things, I'm just kind of surmising, but if you take a look at what they've been doing for yeah. the last several years engaging in identity politics, I think they made a demographic calculation that if they yeah. were able to um, specify certain groups 
that they think that they can stir up so that um, they will vote in a particular fashion. That yep. augurs to their short-term benefit, regardless of what happens to their constituents. It's, it's shocking. Peter, thank you for that. That was a great explanation. Thanks for having me.